In .NET 8, there are two ways to create a web API. The first and simpler way is to use the minimum APIs. And the second way is to use controllers. In our demo, I have showed you the first approach, which is the minimal APIs. And you can see that it's very, very simple. There's only one file, which is a program.cs file. And you basically do all your work in this one file. Although this approach is very simple, very easy to understand, but it has its limitations. For example, we're dealing with shirts right now, and you can see all of the endpoints that dealing with the shirts. What if we need to deal with other objects, for example, pants? Are we going to put all of those endpoints inside the same file? That is not very clean. So minimum APIs is only for simple scenarios. A better, cleaner, and more comprehensive way to create a web API is to use controllers. And when I say controllers, I'm actually referring to the MVC style controllers. We don't have to worry about what MVC is in this course, but we need to understand what is a controller. You can see the problem here. All of the endpoints are within the file. If we have controllers, then we can organize the methods in classes, right? Because a controller is basically just a class which can be used to organize the endpoint methods. So let's actually start creating a controller. We can right click on the project and we can add a folder and let's call it controllers. Now we have the controllers folder. We can add a class to it and let's call it shirts controller. We have to make sure that this is called controller. There's some convention here. Now, now we have a POCO class. And if we want this controller to be a web API controller, there are two things we need to do. First of all, we need to derive this controller from controller base. And secondly, we need to use a C sharp attribute, which attribute the API controller to decorate this class. So these two things makes the shirts controller a web API controller. Right? And inside here, we can basically create method for each one of these endpoints. For example, we can start creating the get shirts method to return all of the shirts. And we can just basically give the, the same type of message, reading all the shirts. And the second one would be get shirt by ID. And then here we're gonna say reading shirt, which ID can use a string interpolation. And then here we'll have our create shirt. And the message is creating a shirt. And we're gonna have our update shirt, which takes a parameter. The message would be updating shirt. Last but not least, we have our delete shirt method. And message is going to be deleting shirt. So now we have our controller and you can see that this approach of grouping the CRUD operation methods inside a controller is a pretty good architecture. So if we were to create a set of endpoints for pens, then we can just come over here, create another controller and we can call it pens controller. We can do the same thing. I'm not going to actually do it. But as you can see, using controllers is a much cleaner way to create Web API endpoints. And because of that, we have much better maintainability in our code base. So now the question is, given a HTTP request, how do we map that HTTP request to a particular method inside the controller? I'm going to talk about that in the next video. To sum up, a controller is basically just a class. And there are two things you need to do to make it a Web API controller. One is you have to derive from the controller base class. Secondly, we need to use the API controller attribute to decorate the controller class. So as long as you have these two things for the controller, and then you call this class something controller, then your class is a web API controller class, which can be used to specify the endpoints for your web API. In the next lesson, I'm going to talk about how to map a HTTP request to a particular endpoint inside a controller for a controller-based web API. I'll see you in the next one.